Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee uh, at, uh, as we watch, Ermine Her Her moving <clears throat> off the, uh, well off the Carolina coast, tracking east-northeast. Looks like it's slowing down a bit. Uh, I thought tonight we'd go over the weather models and um, a few other things regarding what we can expect. First thing I want to point out is the signature look of this is <clears throat> of a non-tropical storm at this point. This is a strong and formidable cyclone, but it's a cold core cyclone, much like you would see in the wintertime. There are no thunderstorms, very little convection near the center. Most of the rain is well to the north and east. Now, this may start to change during Sunday as we start to see rain developing uh, across the northern semicircle and then in the western side uh, as uh, the system uh, possibly tries to get a little more warm core, which is what a tropical system is. And the other issue, issue is the wind. Uh, with non-tropical systems, the strongest winds are usually well away from the center as opposed to concentrated near the center itself. And here's a close-up view, and you can see the center right there as it uh, moves eastward. This uh, shading you see, that's actually the sun setting. So it goes from an actual visible picture to an infrared picture. And you can follow the center along. It's moving pretty much straight east, uh, which is probably good news for us, uh, rather than had it kept on going more northeast. So this in initial push to the east has uh, pushed it out further so that when it does the hook back, it won't be hooking back as far west uh, where it would be um, a, a really severe uh, issue, but we're going to have to still watch this carefully because that hook is going to happen. Now, let's look at tonight's weather models because they seem to have zeroed in a little bit on the GFS. You can see how the low is now forecast to move north and then hook back westward. This is its closest that it gets to the coast. Now, if this is the case, the back edge of the rain gets to southeastern Connecticut to Long Island to about New York City and rain gets into coastal New Jersey and then the wind of course is probably is confined mainly to the immediate coastal areas. You go north and west of the Garden State Parkway, you go north and west of I-95 or New York City or if you want to uh, make it a, a case where it's a little further west, let's say 287, so we take care of southern Westchester, north and west of there little or nothing is going to happen. It might get a little breezy but that's about it. And as far as the winds on the coast are concerned, uh, what the GFS does is it brings the gales right about to the coastline. So I'll just back it up here. This is tomorrow. Uh, this is in the morning on Sunday. It has gales touching Long Island. These are sustained winds now. The gusts, are, of course, are going to be higher, but it has sustained winds to gale force touching Long Island Sunday night and also touching the New Jersey shore Sunday night into Monday morning before those winds start to gradually diminish. The biggest issue, I want to emphasize that the biggest issue really is coastal flooding for Long Island and New Jersey. And uh, from the National uh, Hurricane Center on their storm surge with tide, their general forecast is for some areas to experience three to five, a three to five foot storm surge with the tide does not include the waves. So from the central New Jersey coast down to Cape May into Delaware Bay, uh, also for New York Harbor near Staten Island, uh, western the western part of Long Island on the south shore, so west of Fire Island, a three to five foot surge, a five to seven foot surge in Long Island Sound, mainly because of that northeast wind, and then it lessens once you go east of Port Jefferson, and on the Connecticut side, it would be west of Bridgeport, and once you go east of Bridgeport, the tidal flooding um, is lessens it's three to five feet and then it goes to one to three feet so for eastern long island and for east of fire island it's one to three feet uh on the um, tidal surge and also from sandy hook to central ocean county now this could change this is primarily based on on a, on a tropical system now that it became a non-tropical system might change exactly where this surge will occur so i think the best um the best way to approach this is just expect the three to five foot surge from west of Fire Island down to Cape May with higher amounts in Long Island Sound and higher amounts in maybe into Delaware Bay and just kind of play it on that rather than trying to get um, too specific with this. Now, on my website, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, uh, I have uh, specific posts that break down what to expect in each region in terms of wind and rain. Um, 
I kind of painted what I thought would be the worst case scenario. In my view, from the standpoint of wind and rain, it doesn't appear that bad. Certainly, it does not that be, it won't be bad at all once you go just inland of the coast. Uh, again, coastal flooding, the biggest issue. Uh, so don't forget, uh, you can check all of this on meteorologistjochaffee.com, on weatherlongisland.com for Long Island specific posts, and also SNS Storm Chasers, uh, we're tra tracking all of this, and uh, you can look at uh, some live video f feeds and uh, pictures that are uh, provided on their website, SNS Storm Chasers, ssstormchasers.com.